Takeshi Hongo is kidnapped and transformed into the bad augment by Shocker. As Hongo escapes from Shocker with Ruriko Midorikawa, Kumo Augment goes after him and his henchmen masquerading as riot police abduct Ruriko. However, Ruriko is protected by Hongo, who transforms into his augment form. He easily defeats Kumo Augment's henchmen, taking them down with a single attack and smashing their faces. After defeating them Hongo and Ruriko escape to a hidden cabin. Here Hongo starts to remember what he has done. He has killed many people and as the guilt has taken control of him, he takes off his glove and sees that his body has been mutated. Shocked by this sudden change, he takes off his mask and is horrified as soon as he sees his face. He has become something that is not human. He at once puts the mask back on and meets with Ruriko. Hongo asks Ruriko what happened to him, how he suddenly became so powerful, and why he mutated. She was the one who broke him out so she should know something. Just then an old man enters whose name is Hiroshi Midorikawa. He tells Hongo that he is his masterpiece and he developed him to save people, as other augments were evil, and he needed someone to fight them. He tells Hongo that his bike is also part of this project, and reveals that Hongo is not a hybrid between a human and a grasshopper. He reveals that Hongo is his masterpiece augment to defeat the organization and chose him because Hongo wished for power after his father. A policeman was killed by a suspect he was trying to ease. He also explains that the life source prana allows Hongo to harness superhuman strength. He explains to Hongo that he gets his power because of an energy known as Parana and Dr. Hiroshi Midorikawa reverts Hongo to his civilian form at the hideout by expelling the excess prana life energy. Just then Hongo sees a spider and when he slaps it, it turns out to be a robot. Suddenly, Ruriko collapses and a lot of those tiny spider bots come out of her body. Dr. Hiroshi Midorikawa tells Hongo to run but just then Kumo Augment arrives. He easily traps Hongo by throwing him to a wall and trapping him with his web. He looks at Dr. Hiroshi Midorikawa and says that all traitors should be terminated. Dr. Hiroshi says that he is ready and he has done his work. From Kumo Augment, two more hands emerge and he strangles Dr. Hiroshi to death. Before dying Dr. Hiroshi looks at Hongo and asks him to take care of Uruka. Kumo Augment then looks at Hongo and says that he shouldn't have turned back to his human form. Now Hongo can't break free because he is weak. Kumo Augment then takes out a bomb and says to Hongo that he will not end him just yet and after setting the timer, he picks up Uriko and leave the cabin in a car, leaving Hongo trapped inside the cabin with a ticking bomb. Soon, the bomb explodes but Hongo jumps out of the explosion, he is unharmed, and even his bike is not damaged. He at once pursues Kumo, and on the way, he presses a button, and his bike transforms, and he stands on the bike, to use the device which changes him into his grasshopper augment form. Soon he catches up to Kumo, and suddenly out of nowhere, Kumo's henchmen arrive and they all start to fight. Hongo easily defeats them and he and Kumo start their duel. Hongo wins and Kumo dies but something bizarre happens. Kumo's body starts to melt and vaporizes. Here Riko tells Hongo that all the agents who work for the organization melt when they die and the same thing will happen to them too. Hongo and Riko go to Riko's safe house, where Riko tells Hongo that she is always prepared for everything. She tells him that no one knows about this hideout but as soon as they enter the building they encounter two government agents at their new safe house. Mariko asks them, who are they and they explain that they are government officials, and their job is to take care of the mess that Shocker makes. Mariko thinks that they are working for the Shocker, but they tell them that they are working against Shocker and they want to take Shocker down. And for this, they will need Hongo and Mariko's help. Mariko asks them what will happen to her and Hongo after they help them take Shocker down. They explain that they will make sure that Hongo and Mariko survive and no one will hunt them. Ruriko agrees and the agents tell them they are now officially part of the anti-Shocker organization. The agents propose an alliance to defeat Shocker. Ruriko reveals Shocker's origins, revealing that it was created by a billionaire to bring happiness to humanity. However, the billionaire committed suicide, leaving an advanced artificial intelligence in charge. Unfortunately, the AI misinterpreted its creator's intentions and believes in subjugating humans for their well-being. But Ruriko says that she will not be signing any sort of documents and the agents agrees. Then they talk about their first target who is a bad AUG. The agent gives Ruriko a gun and asks her if she knows how to use it. Ruriko tells him that one gun will not be enough so she asks for another gun and spare magazines. Meanwhile, Hongo is still feeling guilty because he killed some people. Eventually, the team is ready to set off. But Ruriko tells Hongo that she will be going alone because Hongo is still too kind and she can't rely on him in battles. After coming to Bad Og's place, Ruriko is greeted by Jay. Soon the fight begins and Ruriko shoots down all of the robots at that place but when she goes to confront Bad Og, she gets caught because of the virus that Bad Og is working on and now she is under his control. The agents who were watching all of this from a distance are now worried and one of them suggests to help Ruriko. But his superior says that he wants to see what Hongo will do now. 
Soon Hongo comes there and he confronts the bad Og, but as he holds Ruriko hostage, Hongo doesn't have any choice but to listen to him. But when the bad Og thought Hongo is also affected by the virus, he gets a huge surprise. The virus doesn't have any effect on Hongo. Even Ruriko was faking all this. She tells the bad Og that all she has to do was to change the code of the virus. The bad Og in anger starts to attack them but Ruriko pulls out a shotgun and she shoots at bad Og's wing. The bad Og tries to flee after kicking Ruriko but Hongo chases him, and they ended up going to a train station, while the bad Og was relaxed because he thought Hongo will not be able to catch up to him. After all, he is flying too high, Hongo uses his bike boosters as an elevator and attacks the bad Og in the air and he defeats him in one blow. Soon Ruriko also comes there and she asks Hongo if he was okay. Hongo says that he is fine and he has made up his mind, he wants to protect people. Meanwhile, Sasori Og is taking residence in an outpost where she and her group are engineering several highly dangerous chemical weapons, which she planned to use to start a revolution. She has made plans as a precaution, and her plan seems to work at first when the decoys are ambushed by Anti-Shocker Alliance. While she is happy, her happiness doesn't last long as soon she is approached by members of the Anti-Shocker Alliance. And now she takes matters into her hand and she introduces herself in a flashy manner by kicking off the door of the limousine that she was hiding in before being joined by her low-class members. The Scorpion Augment then gleefully slaughters several of Takabana's men in droves as her low-class members provided cover for her with their riot shields, before more reinforcements can arrive at that place, but as they do they gun down the sadistic Augment's troops. Seeing this as a challenge, Sasori Og then decides to face the squadron with confidence, only to be gunned down by the reinforcements. It was later revealed that Ruriko Midorikawa had requested for Takabana and Taki to neutralize the sadistic Augment, as the Prana system was ineffective on Sasori Og's venomous chemical weapons. And now they decide to head towards their next target which is Waspog. On the way Hongo asks Ruriko if she knew the Waspog. Ruriko tells him that she grew up in the organization so she knows most of the main shocker agents. And she tells him that Waspog is like the closet thing to a friend for her. Hongo then asks her if she is planning on convincing Waspog to surrender. Ruriko says that she is far too dangerous and it is better for everyone if she disappears. Hongo asks her why all the members of Shocker are so dangerous. And he soon finds out from Ruriko that only the main agents are like this. The remaining agents are brainwashed by using prana and they are given superhuman bodies and forced into slavery. And the same thing would have happened to Hongo if Ruriko didn't save him on time. Soon, Hongo stops, and suddenly all the people behind them also stop. Hongo asks Ruriko if it was an action of shocker and she agrees and tells him that the wasp nest has grown way more than the organization knew. Just then a man in a yellow suit comes there and greets them. He informs Ruriko that the wasp og is expecting to meet her. As they follow that man, they arrive at the wasp's og's hive. Ruriko tells Hongo that his hearing is better than hers, so once they are inside he should find the server as soon as possible. Soon they meet Waspog and Ruriko says that her taste hasn't changed as the whole room was filled with katanas. Waspog says that taste reflects a person's personality. They also meet Kay and he tells them it was his job to observe Ruriko. Ruriko tells Waspog to leave Shocker, but she tells her Ruriko to come back. She explains that her goal is to create a world where everyone is a slave and they will work their way to earn happiness and by doing so they can overcome despair and she thinks that it is the perfect global system. She explains that this town is the perfect example and she invites Ruriko and Hongo to come to Shocker and be a part of this grand plan. But they both deny and at once Waspog gets ready to fight them. Although she says that she hates violence but she steals prana of her henchmen, and this shocks Hongo. Waspog says to Ruriko that Akira told her to bring Ruriko back alive so she should give up and just follow her. Soon they are surrounded by many people and most of them were local citizens. The Waspog says that these are just innocent workers who decided to help her in her experiment. Hongo won't hurt innocent people, right? Hongo pulls Ruriko and they both after saying that he also hates violence. Jump off the building Hongo transforms into his grasshopper Og and they both manage to flee on Hongo's bike. Whereas the agents are watching this and they think Hongo is still too kind and he chose to run instead of fighting. His superior says that's Hongo's strong point. Meanwhile, Hongo and Ruriko are caught up by the mob and Hongo comes up with a plan and he asks Ruriko to trust him. Soon Ruriko is brought in front of Waspog and while Waspog is thinking Ruriko is alone, Hongo comes from the sky and his attack causes an explosion which frees everyone from Waspog's control. Now they begin to fight and soon Hongo defeats the Waspog, but he doesn't kill her. After Hongo battled her, she is later shot to death by one of their informants using the Sasori Augment's toxin. Akiro Midorikawa reawakens as the Chu Augment and begins killing countless government officers. Akiro sends their prana to a nightmarish dimension known as the Habitat Realm. Ruriko reveals that Akiro intends to do the same to humanity as a result of his mother's unjust murder, which has fueled his hatred for humanity Hongo and Ruriko are confronted by Akiro Midorikawa but are easily subdued. Akiro deploys Hayato Ikamanji, also known as Bata Augment too, after them. Hongo escapes with Ruriko and fights Ikamanji but would suffer serious injuries. Ruriko manages to release Ikamanji from Shocker's control, urging him to join their crusade. 
However, Ruriko is abruptly slain by the Kamakiri Kamari and Augment, a shocker hybrid Augment who was later killed by Ikamanji. After recovering, Hongo learns from Ruriko's will that she lost to Akira because his prana was stronger. She discloses a program transferred to his mask that will disable Akira and expresses her happiness during her time with Hongo. Hongo reaches out for Ikamanji to work with him against Shocker, but he respectfully declines. As Hongo goes to confront Akira, he is intercepted and chased by eleven mass-produced phase variation bad augments. He is saved by Ikamanji, who dubs himself Kamen Rider No. 2 and the two cooperate to defeat the augments. The double riders confront Akira, who transforms into his complete form, Kamen Rider No. 0. Hongo and Ikamanji smash Akira's throne using their cyclones, and although they manage to cut off the source of Akira's prana, the fight has just started. Akira says that he underestimated and as an apology, he will fight them seriously. Akira transforms into his Og form and tells them that butterflies are the symbol of immortality and blue butterflies are considered messengers of gods. The throne is the source of Akira's prana. As his prana supply is cut off and his disguise is disrupted, Akira gradually weakens. After a fearsome and overwhelming fight, the duo succeeds in removing Akira's mask and replacing it with Hongo's, where Akira interacts with Ruriko's spirit and the two reconcile. Having exerted their prana, Hongo and Akira both disintegrate, leaving Ikamanji behind. Later, the two government agents bestow Hongo's mask to Ikamanji and revealed that Ruriko's prana is safe at a secure location. Before his final moments, Hongo entrusted Ikamanji to carry on the legacy of the Cayman Rider. Ikamanji reluctantly agrees to work with the two agents, Takabana and Taki. He is later equipped with a new suit and a restored version of Hongo's mask. Ikamanji can interact with Hongo's spirit, which resides inside his mask. The two, now known as Cayman Rider No. 2 Plus 1, ride on towards sunset as they continue their crusade against Shocker.